Hey guys, wouldn't it be awesome if we could use a modern USB mouse like this one, be it wired or wireless, with our retro gaming PCs? Well, this is the topic of this video. We will look at a very interesting and clever solution. And this is the card that makes this possible. It is the Pico Gas. And here we have everything connected, a live demonstration. This is my Socket 7 retro PC. Here's the Pico Gas with the USB mouse connected. And as you can see, we can control the mouse cursor nice and smooth. Absolutely beautiful experience and a real game changer for the retro gaming PC community. I have already reviewed this on the channel. I will put a card on the screen and a link down below in the video description. This is really a sound card compatible with the Gravis Ultrasound, but also Adlib, it can do Tandy, CMS, and now even Sound Blaster. And to look at that, over here we have, yeah, a USB port. It is compatible with game ports, but now with the latest firmware, we can just plug in a modern USB mouse like this one. And the card, what it does, it's so nifty. It acts as a serial port. So it will take over one of the COM ports of your machine. Wikipedia has some information about COM ports or serial interfaces and for us of interest is this information here. The resources for the COM ports, what interrupts and what addresses are being used. Most retro computers have two serial ports and my recommendation is we're gonna go after COM1 which sits on interrupt 4 and on this address. Here we are on the retro PC and we can see all these system configurations and specifications. Under serial ports we can see our two COM ports here. Now COM1 of the system which is integrated on this motherboard we need to disable because we want the Pico Gus to take over. Depending on the system you can configure this either on the BIOS or you might have to change a jumper on the controller card. This machine is a little bit more modern so we can go into the options here and all we have to do is disable the serial port COM1. If you have an older computer you will have an I.O. card like this one with floppy and IDE ports. There's a COM port here as well as one over here and you will just have to figure out the jumper setting to disable COM1. After a reboot we can now confirm here under serial ports COM1 has disappeared. We only have COM2 in the system and we are now ready to configure the Pico Gus to take over COM1. I've downloaded the latest drivers from the Pico Gus website. Remember if you're watching this video in the future your version might be a little bit newer. So the first thing I would do is flash the latest firmware because there have been some changes. So let's do that. And the next step is to put the Pico Gas into a compatible mode. You can see here slash mode and we've got a couple of options. Now remember because we're using interrupt 4 for the COM1 port we can't use it in combination with the GUS, the Sound Blaster and the MPU just yet. We can only use it in combination with these four options. I'm gonna go with Adlib. It's better than having no sound at all. So we type in PGUS in it slash mode followed by Adlib. And next we need to enable the mouse function with the slash mouse com command. So pgus init slash mouse com one. And after that we saving all the settings to the card with the slash save command. There are more options that we can tweak. For example we can change the type of mouse. By default it's the Microsoft mouse which works in pretty much every situation but if you have a specific need to change it to for example a Logitech, IntelliMouse or Mouse System Mouse 
you can do that. You can also change the rate, the polling rate, to have a smoother movement of the cursor. By default, it's 60, so you can play around with that. And also the sensitivity of the mouse. I'm leaving all these settings at default. This 60 Hertz setting is really nice. You get a smoother mouse experience compared to the real thing. And now let's do a reboot. So let's continue booting DOS, expanded memory plus mouse. And we can see here the cute mouse driver detects a serial mouse on COM1 in Microsoft mode. Let's open the DOS editor, moving the mouse. And here we go, very smooth with a modern USB mouse. Absolutely fantastic. And of course this works with games. Here we are in Monkey Island 2 and yeah, controlling it with a modern USB mouse. It's a really smooth and beautiful experience with a wired or wireless mouse. Absolutely terrific and I think it makes Playing games on a vintage retro gaming PC, just that little bit nicer. So guys, if you can't tell, I'm really excited about this product for two reasons. Firstly, it addresses an issue I uh, always found quite frustrating. These old serial mice with a 386 or 486 machine, they are just not very smooth to operate. So now being able to use a modern USB mouse is absolutely amazing. And secondly, I'm excited because purchasing the Pico Gus, well, it was one of my best retro purchases in recent times. Big shout out to Ian for continually working on the project and releasing new features and new firmware. So absolutely an amazing project. And now I'm really interested to hear from you. What is your take on using the Pico Gus with a modern USB input device? And what mouse do you use with your retro gaming PC? And if you want to buy a Pico Gus, well, there are some links from shops around the world down below in the video description. And yeah, that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you soon with another one.